now that we understand the basic terms that we'll need to use in discussing uh, genetics, we want to spend just a moment to talk about this idea of what we refer to as a Punnett square. A Punnett square is just a simple method that can be used to predict the possible outcomes of a genetic cross. So if we look at the screen, we see an example of a Punnett square. We're going to use the disease cystic fibrosis, which is a, a tragic uh, disease that affects humans, as an example over the next couple slides in this chapter. And so I'll explain the disease more in the next slide. But for now, let's just uh, realize that cystic fibrosis is caused by a mutated allele, one particular gene that has a mutation in it that, that produces a protein that doesn't function properly. So, an individual can be, and this is, I need to add this as well, this is a recessive, what we call autosomal disorder, meaning it's not on a sex chromosome, it's on one of the other 44 chromosomes that are not involved in sex determination, the 22 pairs that are not involved in sex determination, 44 chromosomes total, and it is a recessive disorder, meaning that it only shows up if you have two recessive alleles for the, the trait. So an individual can be heterozygous for the disease and not realize they have it. We refer to that state as being a carrier. They have the gene for the disease, but they don't express the traits of that disease. And so a Punnett square allows us to look at the, the potential consequences that would occur if two people that are both heterozygous for cystic fibrosis get together and produce offspring. And so if we look at the top of our Punnett square, we see that an egg uh, can have one of uh, two states as it relates to cystic fibrosis. The egg can either get the dominant normal allele that we see right here, so this is the allele that codes for the functional protein, or the egg could get the recessive uh, mutated allele, and this is the one that codes for the non-functional mutated protein. And so because the female has, this is on chromosome number seven, every female of course has two chromosome number sevens, and she will have a normal allele on one, a capital F in this case, and a lowercase allele on the other, the mute, which represents the mutated allele. And so when she produces eggs, 50% of the eggs will have the dominant allele, and 50% of the eggs will have the recessive mutated allele. The same thing applies to sperm. And so there's a 50-50 chance that the egg or sperm will be normal or mutated. And so when these eggs and sperm meet uh, at reproduction, then the Punnett square is a way of displaying the probabilities of the genotypes in the offspring when these gametes meet. So if a dominant uh, egg, if a, an egg that has a dominant allele meets a sperm that has a dominant allele, then this individual is completely normal. They're not a carrier for cystic fibrosis. They don't have cystic fibrosis. They are completely normal. We'll never have to deal with cystic fibrosis or, or the potential of carrying it. However, if a mutated egg, so remember this doesn't hurt the egg itself, but it's going to hurt the offspring. So if there's a mutation in this allele that's, that's placed into this egg, and 50% of the eggs will be of this nature, if it meets a normal sperm, then the offspring is heterozygous. The same thing applies if a normal egg meets a mutated sperm and so that individual is heterozygous. And so 50% of the offspring will be expected to be carriers because you can make a carrier either with a mutated egg and normal sperm or a mutated sperm and normal egg. And so that this box represents 25%. This box represents 25%. 25 plus 25 is, of course, 50%. So the last in this last box here, this is what occurs when the mutated egg meets a mutated sperm. And so this individual, unfortunately, does have cystic fibrosis. And we'll talk about the consequences of cystic fibrosis in just a moment. But interestingly, th this is simple inheritance, simple Mendelian inheritance. This is what Mendel observed in his pea plants. And this is, is the most uh, basic type of inheritance. Well, we need to understand this before we understand any other type of inheritance. Let's also go ahead and say, before we talk about cystic fibrosis, let's go to this slide and look at what Mendel actually observed. So we now realize, and this is what Mendel realized at the time, although he didn't know what genes were, he called them particles of inheritance, we now realize that Mendel was taking a so-called true breeding tall plant, meaning the plant was homozygous dominant, uh, it had two alleles for tall here, capital T, capital T. He took a homozygous short plant, uh, little t, little t, and he bred those together, 
and in that F1, so-called F1 generation, the first generation after the parental generation, he observed that all the individuals were tall. Now, he couldn't see this, but all the individuals were heterozygous, and he deduced this via this idea of the particles of inheritance that he discussed. Now, what he did was take two individuals from this generation that were both heterozygous, cross them together, and when he did that, the Punnett square that we see below was created. This is just like our cystic fibrosis Punnett square. And so we see that there is a 25% chance of producing a tall plant, uh, at least that's homozygous dominant. There's a 50% chance of producing a tall plant that's heterozygous. So overall, 75% of the individuals are tall and 25% are short. There's a 25% chance of producing an individual that's homozygous recessive and therefore short. So interestingly, the genotypic and phenotypic ratios are different here, as you can see. The genotypic ratio would be 75% tall, 25% short. The phenotypic ratio would be 25% homozygous dominant, 50% uh, heterozygous, and 25% homozygous recessive. That would be the genotypic ratio. So genotypic and phenotypic ratios are different in this case. Let's go back to cystic fibrosis. Now, Cystic fibrosis is a devastating and, and really sort of scary, not sort of, it is a scary disease that, that impacts humans, especially humans of European ancestry, uh, humans that, that we would refer to as Caucasians. Uh, most of these genetic disorders are, are uh, ethnic, they're, they're specific to certain ethnicities, and uh, this one is specific to the uh, Caucasian ethnicity. And so cystic fibrosis is a uh, disorder that is caused by a mutation in a gene that codes for a protein that acts as a chloride ion transporter in the lungs. The chloride ion transporter is supposed to transport chloride ions out of the lungs and if it does so then water follows out of the lungs and a, an appropriate level of moisture remains in the lungs. If you have the disorder then the chloride ion transporter doesn't work the chloride ions don't leave the lungs and a thick mucus builds up in the lungs. This thick mucus has to be removed on a regular uh, basis uh, by the, the individual or the parents of the individual. Uh, the parents have to beat on the back uh, of the uh, child or uh, the child has to wear a percussion vest to loosen up this mucus and remove it several times a day. Um, there are other physiological consequences, but the ones associated with the lungs are most severe. 97% of the males uh, are sterile. And the uh, lifespan is, uh, expectancy is, is significantly shortened. Now it's getting longer and longer, which is, is very good news. Um, it, it used to be around 30, and now it's crept up to over 40. But you know, that's obviously a, a very shortened uh, lifespan and a, and a very difficult um, state in, in which to persist. So the truth is there are over a thousand different mutations that have been identified that cause this particular problem with the chloride ion transporter. Over two-thirds of the cases of cystic fibrosis are caused by just one mutation though. That mutation is most common in individuals of Caucasian descent and somewhere between two and four percent of ca Caucasians carry this allele. In other words, they're heterozygous for cystic fibrosis. They don't know, almost no one who produces a child with cystic fibrosis knew that they were a carrier um, because they're completely normal. They exhibit no symptoms um, whatsoever that we can tell, determine anyway, of this, uh, the, the fact that they are a carrier. Um, and so, interestingly, and it's a very prevalent uh, problem in the United States, about one in 2,500 live births result in uh, or is affected by cystic fibrosis. So one in 2,500 babies have cystic fibrosis, um, which means that it's more common than some genetic disorders and, and less common than others. But it's a, it's a devastating genetic disorder. It's not like some of the other genetic disorders that can be uh, remedied uh, by treatment uh, in the early stages of development. This is something that, that unfortunately, uh, to this date, uh, we have not been able to cure gene therapy probably offers the best hope of cure and we will eventually talk about gene therapy in our class um, but that's not something that's been perfected and is widely available at this point so this is a again a recessive uh, autosomal disorder you can see
I'm sure at this point very clearly how it would occur. So here we have um, uh, a short pedigree that shows us the, the movement of this gene from one generation to the next. In the first generation, we have the couples, uh, of these couples, only one is a carrier. And so as long as that's true, then, then that's fine. There are going to be no individuals in the offspring that have cystic fibrosis. There will be carriers, as you can see here. So as long as this gene, remember there are two genes here, two alleles, which are alternate forms of a gene, if this purple one is passed on, then, then the individual becomes a carrier, as depicted here. Um, and the circles and squares represent uh, sexes, circles females and the squares males. Um, but so what happens here when a female that's a carrier gets together with a male that's a carrier? Well, uh, what's depicted below here represents the, the probability. Remember these Punnett squares are not guarantees. Um, they're simply, they simply tell us the probability. So there's a 25% chance of having a normal individual there's a 50% chance of having an individual that's a carrier and a 25% chance of having an individual that has cystic fibrosis. I encourage you to quiz yourself at this point and ask yourself what are, make sure that you can state the genotypes of all of these offspring. And so you might pause the video at this point and make sure that you can state these genotypes and then I'll tell you the genotypes right now. Okay, here are the answers. So as you undoubtedly realize, this individual is homozygous dominant, this individual is heterozygous, this individual is heterozygous, and this individual is homozygous recessive. So that is the, the most prominent autosomal genetic recessive disorder that affects uh, North Americans uh, today. Sickle cell anemia, we'll talk about a little bit later in our class, and it's the inheritance of sickle cell anemia occurs in the same way. It affects different ethnicities, and therefore it's not quite as common in North America, but it's an equally, well, it's probably not equally devastating. It's a very disturbing disease and has very severe consequences, but it can be more easily treated than can cystic fibrosis. But sickle cell anemia acts in, works in exactly the same way as far as inheritance goes. Okay, we talked about this slide. We want to talk about another genetic disorder at this point, referred to as Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is especially devastating because it is a dominant uh, genetic disorder. Let's go ahead and look at the pedigree for Huntington's disease that's shown here. So what we see is this, that in this particular case, you don't have to have both parents carrying a gene for this disorder because it's a dominant disorder. As long as you have one affected allele, then the offspring have this disorder. So almost always the uh, individuals that are that have Huntington's disease will be heterozygous and so this means there's a 50% chance that this male that we see here will pass the gene on to his offspring. In this particular case the individual was fortunate and did not receive the gene. In this case the individual did receive the gene and so um, here's another couple. These individuals are, are both uh, they're not carriers and so none of, the, none of their children have actually I should not have used the term carrier neither of these individuals have Huntington's disease and so none of their offspring have Huntington's disease and so the take home message is, is relatively simple as long as you have one allele for this disorder then you have the disorder it's just like the coat color example that I talked about in the last lecture if you have one dominant allele for black hair in the rabbits uh, that we talked about, then you have black hair. And, and so this disorder works in the same way. It should be noted that there are no carriers for this particular um, disorder. There can't be a carrier because if you have a gene, then you have the disorder. So what does Huntington's disease do? Well, it is a uh, mutant protein that ends up forming clumps of, uh, large clumps of, of protein inside nerve cells that eventually results in destruction of the cells. And it's a slowly progressing disorder. The, the bad thing about Huntington's disease is that typically it doesn't show up until the 40s or 50s. Most people typically have reproduced by this time. And so they didn't know they had the disease. They've already produced offspring. And now the children are left with this difficult decision. Do they want to be t genetically tested or not? There's a 50% chance they're normal. There's a 50% chance that they have this disease. It's going to result in this severely shortened lifespan. So Huntington's disease is it a very um, 
devastating disorder. It's progressive. Eventually, humans lose control of all their nervous function and uh, and cease to, to survive. Um, and so they typically don't live much past uh, age 50 or, or perhaps younger if the onset of the disease uh, begins earlier. So these have been some fairly uh, perhaps depressing things to, to talk about, but these are areas in which the discussion of genetics becomes very important uh, to human health, um, especially in the case of cystic fibrosis. Huntington's disease is not as common, um, but cystic fibrosis is a very common genetic disorder that's found in uh, North America. I have a brother-in-law who has a, a cousin, unfortunately, who did have cystic fibrosis, and uh, it's always recommended that you are genetic get tested uh, genetically to see if you are a carrier if you have cystic fibrosis show up anywhere in your family history. He was tested, fortunately it was not a carrier, but it's uh, certainly a possibility for any of us.